As an engineer, you can be quite often overwhelmed and lose confidence in what you're doing. And this can come from a variety of sources, from being overworked, seeing others more confidently answer questions, or just not knowing the answer. And this lack of confidence can actually hold you back in your career when you're actually doing perfectly fine. And not knowing the answer isn't a bad thing as you know your limits. And as a structural engineer, there is a broad range of topics that you need to know from steel, timber, concrete, or even just structural mechanics. Now you've just passed university, you may think that you know everything, but really you're just at the bottom of that mountain of knowledge that you need to know. And you've only just started climbing the mountain. So not knowing everything is a given, especially when you're starting out. This is quite often coined as the imposter syndrome, but if you harness that lack of confidence, you can use it for a power of good by identifying the areas that you need to work on so you can study more into them or knowing when you need to ask questions, which is really beneficial as an engineer. And by identifying these issues, is this really half the battle? Quite often in society today, this constant pressure for always being right. And you have that little voice in the back of your head saying, what if I'm wrong? So this is what's holding you back. It's this lack of trying and not trying to answer the question. You see, the only way people improve is through making mistakes. The people that improve the fastest are from the people that have made most of the mistakes who have actually put in the effort to try. For failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked perfect where if you're holding yourself back you can sit inside your comfort zone and not get that additional promotion not move up in the ranks and not build the confidence to do something bigger so if you're trying to push those boundaries push into areas that you don't know you will potentially make mistakes but you need to learn from them so it's through a cycle of learn try reflect repeat it allows you to test the boundaries and improve your knowledge not only clicking the like button will help build up yours and my confidence but also helps this channel out amazingly and gets it out to more people. So this cycle is all about pushing the boundaries and making you better. So you're trying to learn something new or even just reflecting back on the knowledge that you have to make sure you don't have any correct assumptions. Then you put it into practice by either trying to design something new, answering the questions that you may be asked. And then when you reflect back and making sure that you're saying, where did I make the mistakes? What could I be doing differently? Then repeat this cycle over and over again. And this constant improvement will make sure that you're always getting better over time. And even if it's just slow increments, like one, two percent here and there, after one, two, five years, you'll be amazed at how far you have come. And you'll see massive improvements over time. See me, I'm 15 years out, I'm still pushing my boundaries. I'm still learning something new every day. Now, I'm not saying that you should just assume you're correct all the time, as most of the time you're probably not, especially when you're starting out. But not having a go is the real problem. And just assuming you're correct and not reflecting back as an engineer, can lead to really bad things because you will not be correct all the time. And even if you know the subject inside and out, sometimes you can also make mistakes. And those mistakes can lead to very bad things, especially in engineering. And sometimes you may not want to answer that question as potentially you've got other clients around you. And if those situations, if you're not confident in answer to the question, you can always go back, look, I'm not really sure as there's several different factors that may affect it. So I'll need to go back to the office and let you know. But create a note on your bit of paper that you're having in the meeting about what you think the answer is. So this is you having a go about thinking of what the correct response would be and then reflecting back at what the answers will be. So just by having a go, you're repeating that cycle and making sure that you're improving your knowledge over time. This also goes for when you're running into a problem with designs. Quite often people just wanna ask questions. They want to get the quick result. They want to know what the answer is, but they do not take time to stop, reflect, and think. So when you're having a problem on a project or you're starting to design something new, at least have a go, work out what you think the answer is and go to your colleagues or your manager or whoever you need to talk to about this problem and say, look, I found this issue on this project. I think the answer may be this. Now, by answering this way, at least you've had an effort, you've had a thought, and you've tried to solve the problem before asking that question. And there's one of two ways that this will go. They're both going to be a winning solution. You see, first up, if you're correct, great. You do know what you're doing, so you know what the correct answer was, and someone doesn't need to go back and respond back about how you should be doing it. Or number two, you've had a try. Now, you thought you knew what the answer was, but you've actually learned something new as they've come back these are the reasons why you need to do it this way. See, engineering is this long marathon where you're going from lack of knowledge 
to being a master. And being a master just doesn't happen overnight, but it takes many years to develop. A lack of confidence can also be built up from being overworked and having the feeling of being overwhelmed. When this happens, you need to try and step back and have a look at what you're doing and taking a deep breath. And then just looking at the project and starting small. So instead of looking at the overall scope, look at one portion of it and slowly build up. So build up little subtasks that you need to work through. So when you're trying to design those columns or those walls or just the whole building, grabbing those floor plans to start off with, looking at the loading plans, doing the column load rundowns, slowly building up on each part of the building and you'll find quite quickly it will come together and it won't seem as big a task as you originally thought. And that project that was so big and so daunting now becomes less daunting and easier to handle. And sometimes you are just overworked. You just keep getting more and more work piled on your desk, piled on your desk, piled on your desk. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how you're going to finish in the timeframes that you're being given. This is where you need to reach out for help and say, look, I don't think I better do everything here. Is there anything that I need to prioritize? Look, I think I should be doing this, this, this. So giving them an option of what you think the priorities are. Now, this is good because the manager then realizes that they've given you too much work, but also then realize that you've looked at the workload that you've got and not just left it to the last minute. You've gone out and either got additional resources to help you on the projects that you're working for, or they might be able to go, look, these tasks are really quite simple. They shouldn't take too long because you're able to simplify it in this way. So giving you a way to design the building quicker. So it's not just about going there and just saying, look, I've got too much work. I don't know what to do. At least giving them a priority list of where you think you should be going. Now they may go back and say, well, there's a different priority that we need them. At least you haven't just gone out and just done the original list as it would have been incorrect in their eyes. You can also find that a lot of people that act confidently may not actually be as confident as you think they are, as this can come from several different places. Either that mentality of fake it until you make it, so making sure that you're always correcting the right answers, or even the Dunning-Kroger effect. If you've got someone who's really junior and thinks they know everything, they have this peak of confidence early on when they don't actually have the ability to do what they're thinking they can do. A confidence outlook doesn't actually mean the person there knows what they're doing or is even really confident. They may be just putting on a facade. And if you ever find yourself where you're the worst person in a team that you've been given, this can be feel very daunting. You've really been given the bad end to lead to something great. As you've got a lot of people around you that you can learn off and encourage you to improve your knowledge. So this will allow you to improve in leaps and bounds over time. As you don't want to be the best person in the room, as now you need to pick up everyone else's mistakes and making sure they're doing things correct. So you always want to surround yourself with people that are better than you. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's helped boost your confidence in your engineering. And I'd just like to give a shout out to one of my nearest Patreons, Mark Nelson. Without his support and the support of my other patrons, these type of episodes would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I hope you have a good Christmas break, and I hope to see you on the other side nice and refreshed.